Mother Nature apparently didn't get the memo tonight that we're still two months away from the technical beginning of winter time. It's awfully quiet in the Dakota Dome now that you could hear plenty of the let's go bison chants bouncing off all the walls and the roof of this big dome over a pretty dominant game for North Dakota State. 14-0, number one for the first time in program history. And what does that mean to y'all just to see that big one? right next to MSUM's name. We can't lie to you guys. Very loud all game, plenty of blue and yellow in the crowd. Though the green and gold made a pretty loud statement too, at least opening things up. And we'll check that out with the highlights coming up now. You can probably hear it behind me. That's Shanley versus Minot, the triple A game. We're only a few minutes away from getting underway. So I'll hurry up and get down there and get all the highlights for y'all coming up at, of course, 10 o'clock tonight. And the most points that NDSU allowed in any FCS game all the way back when they started Division I play. That was almost 20 seasons ago. As we pass through mid-September, the greatest part of the baseball season arrives, and that's the playoffs. And while we're not quite into the postseason just yet, Minnesota's magic number to clinch the AL Central Division dwindles down to just six. Enns joins Lincoln Riley's crew with a title of assistant head coach for the defense and linebackers coach. A little bit twofold. He was defensive coordinator before his head coaching job here at NDSU. It's their first playoff meeting since 1983. That was an SF win. Last Lions playoff win against the Niners. That's 1957, which was on their way to the last league championship. With today's NFL triple header, we get plenty of gridiron action to feast on. Now three teams battling for two playoff spots in Region 1. Lisbon Broncos need a win here tonight against Mayport CG and a loss from Oaks or Ellendale to secure fourth place in the region. They have been on a crazy tear so far this season. They started the year 16-1, 10-1 in conference play, and today they host the Concordia St. Paul Golden Bears, a team that's 8-9 following back-to-back -back losses. <laughs> Just give him a hug. This laughter is commonplace for East Grand Forks football practices as long as Messi is here. They support me. They always have my back when I need They're always there when I need them. Messi Kalinda comes to the sport and Minnesota both from the Congo after his father was kidnapped. The family fled the country and moved to Mexico, then Minneapolis, and now East Grand Forks, where he and his mother have been for the last two years. I'm not going to lie, it was hard. It was very hard. Like, to show up for his own practice and... Uh, trying to do everything, uh, everything the coaches say. And so science, I wasn't able to listen what they are talking about. Just trying to uh, do the same thing my teammates are doing. <laughs> so a poor practice today. Football more came to Messi than the other way around. Head coach Ryan Kosowski seeing his 6'2", 250 pound frame in the school's hallway last year and knowing that he was built for the gridiron grind despite never playing the sport growing up. I can tell you after that first day, like we have a connection because he told me that I want you to join the football team. He, he wanted me to play and I want to try to. His enthusiasm paid off starting football this season and becoming a difference maker on both sides of the ball almost immediately. I mean, I've been playing football my whole life and I've never seen someone just adapt to the game so fast like him. It was quite shocking trying to see him. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he's not just a big kid. He moves well and, uh, you know, he's able to, to make plays out there, which is exciting. And uh, just, just a guy that other teams have to account for, both offensively and defensively. So, you know, really uh, it makes a difference when he's on the field for us. Whether it's his family and supporters in the stands or his newfound family on the field, Messi feels right at home at EGF. My mom can say that she's, she's always there when I need her. If I'm able to be in the school thanks to her, she has to do everything so I can uh, be in school, be able to play sport. I just try to make my teammates happy to have a good practice and everything. With the Green Wave in East Grand Forks. Jack Wallace, Valley News Live Sports. It's been an especially long offseason for the Fargo North Spartans, one that comes right after falling in the Dakota Bowl just under nine months ago. Oh yeah, that's a bomb. But the attitude at fall camp is loose, ready, and amped up for the start of the season this week. We all kind of came together and were like, this is going to be, this is the time to flip the strips on North and just make us get a football again or any sport. And we all came together, believed in each other, and hopefully we can get it done this year. You just heard from one of the main senior anchors on the Spartan ship. That's Peter Haugo, the ultimate Ironman athlete, starring at linebacker and running back. And he'll pursue his football career at NDSU next season. Z's wide open, there we go. Good spot, hey, there we go. 
I have a lot of faith in him, and I know if you know we're not doing too good, I know I can count on him to like bring us up and get us going again. And just he's a great guy. I've known him forever, and it's just he's a great person to be around. Touchdown, Jim! Run! There we go. He leads by example, but he also leads off the field. I mean, he's just a great kid to be around. And not just these guys. <laughs> but over a third of the varsity roster are seniors, over 30 players total, and they're looking for Fargo North's first state title since 2000. Oh, go! It'd be great, um, just obviously just being a leader of the team and leaving a mark behind for the little kids and just having the fans believe in the north side again would feel amazing. Get out there! Get out! North's first opponent of the season comes up against the Horace Hawks, who went winless last season. Hawks on me, Hawks on three! One, two, three, oh! But also graduated no seniors. Nobody can be overlooked. Everyone needs to have, we got to give every single team the same amount of respect that we give anybody else. Um, they're going to come out hard, they're going to come out flying, and, and, and we got to be ready and be able to put in a full game. With the Spartans, Jack Wallace, Valley News Live Sports.